Okay, I'd like to tell you about the magnetic field at the center of a solenoid. So a solenoid is um, a, a tube that has just a bunch of wire wrapped around it and then a current flowing through it. And when you do put a current through there, there is um, going to be a magnetic field, a very strong magnetic field at the center of the solenoid. And so we'd like to derive some, type, uh, some equation that will tell us just how strong that field will be. And as you might guess, it's going to probably depend on how much current we put through there and just how many wires we have there. Um, so let's, let's take a look at the, the, the magnetic field at the center of the solenoid. Now to do this, what I'm going to do is, can you imagine me taking this and just slicing it in half like that and opening it up and showing you a cross section of the wire? Okay, now um, if we did that, if we looked at it from that perspective, then um, it's kind of important that you understand this picture. So this picture is like if current's flowing into this wire, I'll put an X there, then it's going to loop around. It's going to do like a spiral staircase thing like this. So it's going to go shoomp, shoomp, roomp, da da doom, da da doom, da da doom, and come, and come out this end. So for every X, there's a dot. X, there's a dot. X, there's a dot. X, there's a dot. This is the cross section of the wire. So like this is just a, like if I sawed the wire, that would be the, that would just be a small cross section of the wire. Now in reality, there are, there's, they don't put space between these. They're tightly wound. In fact, the equation we're doing is assuming that it's a tightly wound solenoid. But I'm going to not do that for right now because I want to make a couple points. So dot, 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 dot. Okay, so um, so if you get what I'm saying, there's a wire that comes through here, and then it comes around like this. So it's this, this wire is closer to us, maybe, and then it loops this way, and then this way. There's I'm just drawing the spirals. It's kind of important you get this picture, or you're not going to get this derivation. So it just spirals like that, you know? So it goes shroom, ba shroom, ba -dum, ba -dum. That's... We're kind of looking at a cross section of the solenoid. Okay, I'm hoping at this point you're going, I get it, I get it, go on. Okay, because now I'm ready to go on. Okay, so if we look then at the field, say due to this guy right here, just that wire right there, it's if I put my thumb in the direction of the current, oops, the current's into the page, so it's going to be going around like this. Let me draw it in red. It's going around like this, just due to that part of the wire. Whereas the one here, that's going like this. And so you see how the field from this wire right there is to the is that way, and the field from this wire right there is this way. Those cancel out. So the fields cancel out here. And um, what happens is that these meld together with these. Let's just do this on this side for a second. So it's going to... Magnetic field lines are always closed loops. Yeah, same thing's happening over here. These are canceling each other out. And so what we have here is these are going to meld together and give you this field like this. It's going to go out. Oops. Kind of messing this up a little bit. But, but the point is that these, these lines, these field lines get pinched together in here and you get this strong magnetic field. Again, don't think that these lines are just ending somewhere. They actually keep going, and they're going to circle around. Okay? So we get a really strong magnetic field in here, inside there. And the rest of this video is to show you what, how you actually calculate the field right at the center of that. The field right at the center of that um, solenoid. Okay, so let's take a look.
same picture. Okay. And what I'm going to do is um, we got this field going around in there. Remind you that these are some X's. X's. And these are dots. So you got this field going around. And I'm going to draw an Empyrean loop in uh, maybe green. I'm going to make this Empyrean loop go like this. It's going to go like that. Like that. And it's going to go all the way out to infinity. So let me <clears throat> break it like that. Those aren't resistors. That's just like that's just to remind you that this is going out to infinity. So that's my Empyrean loop, but I'm going to make this um, point point A, B, C, and D. Those are the four points on the Empyrean loop. Now remember, there's a field then that's going like this. I'll just show you a couple field lines. It's going like this. And it loops around out here and comes back down this way. So that's the field. This is the magnetic field. And um, let's have these the DLs for the Empyrean loop go like this. Those are just a bunch of DLs that I'm drawing. They come by this way too. They go around the whole thing. Okay. So let me go ahead then and apply Ampere's law. Um, but I'm going to um, say that, would you agree there's some current going through the Empyrean loop? Maybe two of these? So whatever the current is, uh, if this is, say, I, I'll make it a lowercase i. <clears throat> if that's i, then um, then the solenoid doesn't, or the Empyrean loop doesn't know that those are the same wire. It's going to just think that those are two separate wires. So it's going to see two i through there. So I'm going to do... Um, on the one side of Ampere's law, I'm going to say that the it's mu naught. This is Ampere's law. But I'm going to say it's mu naught times 2i because it's going to see it as 2 times the current. Okay, now um, I have to break this into four different integrals. It's going to be the integral from here to from A to B, from B to C. C to D and D to A. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to break this into the integral from B dot DL. It's no longer a closed loop. I'm going to go from A to B plus um, B to C. Plus C to D. Uh, no, C to D. I'm running out of space here. Plus, I got to put this one down here, uh, B dot DL from D to A then. Now that's a closed loop. Okay. So I got to find the integral for both all those. Now, um, it turns out that the integral for this one, for this path <clears throat> from B to C, that because of the dot product, you see how DLs are always perpendicular to, B, to the B field? And so that's going to go to zero. And same with the, the one from D to A. Because the B is, is perpendicular, the B is this way and the DL is that way, those are going to go, disappear. And so, um, and this one's going to disappear because you're at infinity. So the B is, the B is zero out here. So when you do zero dot DL, you're going to just get zero. So the only integral that's going to survive is this middle one. So, or the one that's in the side, the, the solenoid. So from A to B, that's going to survive, but this is going to go away. C to, from C to B is going to go away because B, because of the dot product. And so is A to D. That's going to disappear because of the dot product, because B is, is perpendicular to DL. And this one out here from C to D, that's going to disappear because B is zero. So I'm just left with that. Okay, I'm not going to finish this. I'm going to need one more to finish this. So I'm going to say goodbye and finish it on the next one. Okay, bye.